This presentation is an insight into the basic principles and methods that are used along with standard practice when installing ground gas membranes. We will provide an overview on the range of ground gas membrane products and the tools and techniques required to complete a successful installation of ground gas membranes. This video does not cover the complete installation of a ground gas protection system, which also includes building structure and ventilation requirements. Our range of ground gas membrane products include Memtech M1 Membrane Memtech R1 Radon Membrane Memtech Titan VOC Membrane Memtech Liquid Gas Barrier LGB Memtech Gas Tape 50 Memtech Gas Over Tape 150 and Memtech Detailing Strip As well as the Memtech range of products, you will also require a heat gun with power cable and a suitable power supply. The use of rollers for pressure sealing on the membrane seams. Scissors or cutting tools. Tape measures for confirming dimensions. Black and white marker pens. And cleaning tools to get the membrane in the right condition. Correct PPE should always be worn. Exact details will vary, depending on the construction site, and the specific, COSH, requirements. When working on areas where the gas membrane has been laid, it is important to be mindful of treading on locations where you could damage the seam lines of the gas membranes. It is also important to confirm the substrate you are working on, and that it is appropriate for the gas membrane installation, and safe to work on. The area must be clean, and any debris which could damage the membrane, must be removed. It is essential, to check all tools before they are used. Look at the leads, plugs and connections, and check the PAT testing is in order, and up to date. Visually, inspect all leads for any breaks or damage. Also check the sockets are in place, and are in good order, and will connect properly. To start up the heat machine, we turn on the main switch and set the temperature, according to the thermostat settings. This is indicated on the side of the machine. Also look at the manufacturer's instructions. Here, they give an advisory three minutes to warm up the machine from setting the temperature. To turn the machine off, we need to turn the thermostat down. We need to let it cool down for five minutes before we then turn it off. With the heat gun fully warmed to the required temperature, we can now apply the nozzle between the two sheets and use the roller to apply pressure to fuse the two membranes. This is normally conducted as a test seam at the beginning of the day, just to confirm that the welding is compliant. We can also use the scissors to pick probe or use the mechanical stress point test. Using a test sample, we can peel and shear the membrane to see how well it has adhered and how much fusion has occurred between the sheets. You can see the delamination that has occurred here between these two products. Now we can move to the main seam, where we will place the nozzle between the sheets, as we did in the test seam. Continuously angle the nozzle at 45 degrees, keeping the roller adjacent to the nozzle, to trap all the air that has been passed through the nozzle. This will activate the seam. Sometimes, membranes are spotted to keep them in position, or, weighting down the membrane should be considered. Also, be sure to maintain the 100 mm margin that has been specified. In this particular product, it can be identified by the dotted lines, and is one of the requirements the technician must achieve, during the course of their installation. We now move on to machine welding. As before, we check the equipment, cables and sockets to ensure everything is in good working order. We now set the temperature, and again, this will need a few moments to warm up. The pressure roller and the feave rollers should also be checked, and set to the required speed, to ensure they are working. We now need to set the distance between the rollers, to allow the correct amount of pressure as the membrane is fed through. To do this, we insert a double thickness of the required membrane between the rollers, and rotate the octangle notch to obtain the required pressure.
We can now run a test sample by putting the base sheet in the cradle of the machine, followed by the top sheet. With the FEV machine running, we insert the nozzle, and we can see that the correct amount of pressure is set, as the machine will automatically guide the membrane through. In a similar way to our hand welded joint, we should also pick test this sample as well. We now commence work on the main seam of a live sheet. We have confirmed the subgrade and have enough power cable to keep it running. Using the settings from our testing seam, position the machine as before. We need to stay close to the machine, just to keep it on track, it will not run purely on its own, so we will need to correct it, as it steers. If it goes off course, we can just bring it back into line. We can also adjust the line of the overlapping sheet if needed, to prevent creases and folds occurring in the membrane. Generally, it is best practice for all joints in loose laid sheet gas membranes, to be heat welded. This is a requirement for our Memtech Pro Titan VOC membrane. However, on occasions and smaller projects, the use of gas sealing tapes and over tapes can be used. Ensure the subgrade is suitable, and the membrane joints are clean and free from dirt and debris. Use the dotted lines along the edge of the membrane roll, as a guide, and overlap the two sheets by the minimum requirement of 100 mm. Place the Memtech gas tape 50 in the middle of the overlap, and roll out along the joint. Press the tape to the membrane, using a seam roller. On longer lengths, nick the backing paper to ease removal. Carefully begin to peel the backing paper from the rear of the gas tape. Seal the upper edge of the gas membrane to the gas tape. Press firmly and seal along the joint using a seam roller. The joint should be tested, to ensure there is a good continuous seal. Once tested, and to minimize risk of the joint being kicked open by trades on site, overseal the joint with the wider, Memtech, gas over tape, 150. Where Memtech liquid gas barrier, LGB, has been used for detailing, and there is a requirement to link this to a loose laid sheet gas membrane, then the Memtech, gas tape 50, and gas over tape 150, should be used to provide a suitable gas proof seal. Once the LGB has cured, measure a minimum of 100 mm from the outer edge of the application, and mark a line. This provides the minimum overlap between the LGB, and the sheet membrane. Ensure the joint on both the LGB and sheet membrane, is clean and dry. At the midpoint, between the edge and the measured 100 mm, place and seal the Memtech gas tape 50 to the LGB. Apply pressure to the tape, using a seam roller. Carefully remove the backing paper from the tape. Now, overlay the edge of the sheet membrane to the required minimum 100 mm overlap. Press firmly onto the sealing tape, and then using a seam roller, Firmly seal the membrane to the tape and LGB. Test the joint, to ensure a good continuous seal. Once checked, and to minimize risk of the joint being damaged, 
Apply the Memtech gas over tape 150, over the joint. Our final part of our installation is recording the work that we have done. This will require photographic evidence as a record to accompany the drawings. Use a sign-off sheet to quantify the amount of work which has been done.